Good day, fellow investors. Over the last six, seven months, I received a lot of questions, comments, emails about the banking crisis. Could you comment on it? And I never made a video on it because I didn't have anything to add. Now, we have had the banking crisis. We are still in that. Ray Dalio discusses the fiscal debt crisis. And uh, why don't I discuss the next crisis? There is no point in discussing the banking crisis that has passed. Let me discuss one of the next crises. So Dalio discusses the budget. We'll touch on that. But let's discuss pensions, which is another crisis that is in the making. It's big in the making, has all the steps there that led to the great financial crisis. And it's something that you have to think about. Make your own pension. Don't depend on your pension fund or similar institutions. So I think I will be giving you a lot of value by discussing the next one. Forget about the past ones. But just to mention here how it developed, we have a normal bank, then we have loose regulation, we make more money, and uh, when a stock doubles or triples, you know there is loose regulation and uh, something wrong in the system. And then, of course, Warren Buffett reads the annual report where he said that you could have read that there is a mismatch and there is risk. And then when everyone gets it, then it simply crash. That is how the process goes within a crisis. Some also looked at Bank of America and they say that currently the value of the equity, if you mark to market, there is no equity in Bank of America. So the value of the assets doesn't cover the value of the loans. Of course, that can change over time, but if people panic like it happened already because of the mismatch, then you see again a financial crisis. So we have loose regulation and we need people to start panicking about it. You can see that today we'll discuss more such financial risks that are there, but people are not yet panicking about it. But that is the second step into the developing of a crisis. Another crisis, Ray Dalio mentions it, it's the US national debt, but that's just 31 trillion. So nobody is panicking about it, but there is something else. There are these US unfunded liabilities, 187 trillion in the future, Medicare, social security, benefits, entitlements, etc., etc. So this is six times the U.S. national debt. Nobody talks about it. Nobody panics about it yet. Why? Because for now it still works. And if you start discussing it now, then you need to do things that hurt now. And nobody likes to do things that hurt now. It's better, okay, let's push the can down the road in a way, make looser regulation, change regulation, try to just survive, even if they know that it will hurt more down the road, but nobody cares. They care about the next election, not about the election in 2044, if there will be an election in 2044 with all these liabilities coming, higher taxes coming, maybe not tomorrow, but in the next decade for sure. So that's another crisis in the making. And towards the end of the video, we will figure out how to avoid those crises and how to invest to be safer in the environment. And number three that, again, few discuss, I think, is the pension fund crisis coming. And how do we get to that crisis? When will people start panicking? And the reason why I discuss this now is because I used to be an associate professor at the University of Applied Sciences of Amsterdam. I was teaching finance and accounting. And then we have their pension fund that is for those that work for the government. And they just send me this nice email with the yearly report for 2022. I think I'm just the 1% that goes through the numbers when they say a report. And look at this. These are the financials. And 
they lost 17% of the assets. So their performance in the year was a negative 17%. Negative 17% for a pension fund. That's huge. So they've discussed their balanced positions, bonds, this, this, 17% down. So my pension value, the future payments went down 17%. That's huge. But there is something even better when it comes to these pension funds. So down 17%, but they managed to increase the pension for those getting it now by 12% indexed in line with inflation. So they lost 17% and then they increased all their future payments by 12%. That must be genius. That must be magic. How can you go down 17% in the value of the assets that you have and then increase also the payments you're making? These guys are geniuses. But let's discuss how that works. So they are allowed to pay higher pensions, increase them, index them with inflation because their coverage assets versus liabilities is above 110%. So value of the investments, value of the obligations, and that is your coverage. They have 110% coverage. So despite the loss of 17%, they still have great coverage, thus they can increase the pensions. But where is that magic? Where did they found the genius move that allows them to do that? Well, let's dig deeper. I'm sorry this is in Dutch, but I'll uh, just translate the most important thing. So the coverage, even if they lost 19% here, even if they lost that much money, the coverage stayed at 110%. And in the Netherlands, the rule is that if it is above 110, then you can increase pensions in line with inflation. How did they manage to do this magic? They also lost 11% because of indexation, because they increased that and other effects 15%, thus minus 20, minus 30, minus 45, the coverage should be 65%. And if I get a yearly report and I see my pension coverage is just 65%, I would panic, right? And yes, you would be smart, you would be a healthy person, you would panic, and that's not what nobody wants. So what did they do? They went to the Minister of Finance to change the rules a little bit, and they change the interest rate, they calculate the future obligations, and they got 48 percentage points of coverage back, and all the people working for the Dutch government can be very, very cool. Oh, yeah, everything is okay. The maths, oh, don't look at the complex maths. Summer is starting, Uh, where will we go on holidays? Our pensions will be great. The reality is that your pensions might be 50% of what you expect now if you're lucky. If we are lucky, it will be like that. How did they do that? Well, value of the investments divided by the value of the obligations. So the investments were 500, down 20%. Now they are 400. The obligations were 450, let's say, 500 divided by 450 is 110. So that was the coverage from previous years. Obligations went up 11% because of inflation. So now the obligations are 500. The value of the assets is 400. So the coverage here is 80% in my mathematics. But I guess my IQ isn't as good as theirs. I just fall into the 99th percentile, but uh, they must be using some kind of AI that is not for our humans because they can do this magic. So how do they do that? Well, they say inflation is 8%, so we can use a higher discount rate to discount future obligations and do some magic, sprinkle some magic on it. That is because... That calculation here is calculated by the present value of future or future obligations. And the present value of future obligation is calculated by discounting. I don't know, if you have to pay 100 in 10 years, what's the value now of those 100? 
This is the formula used present value, future value, rate of return expected, and then number of periods. And if you do that, the maths there, there is a way that you can add this 48 and that nobody panics because without that it would be at 60. And here it is. Let me show you. Just go to present value calculator online, future value 100. Let's say I have to give you a hundred bucks 10 years down the road. If the interest rate is two, if your expected return is two, keep in mind the pension fund just lost 17%, but they increase their expected return in the future. Again, I'm not so smart to comprehend their incredible intelligence financial power, but if you calculate, then the present value of future 100 with 2% interest rate is 82. But the finance minister in the Netherlands said, there is inflation, let's increase the discount rate, the interest rate. And uh, if you push the interest rate to 8%, the present value of future obligations is now 46. And that allowed them to keep the coverage ratio positive. So just a change here, one change makes everyone that works for the government in the Netherlands happy and will enjoy their summer holidays. Of course, if they don't watch this video, but uh, don't share it with them. Share it in September after the holidays, okay? Let them enjoy the sun. They need vitamin D, more important than these pensions. But this is how you make a crisis. Looser regulation. Did anything change in the investments the pension fund made? No, they invested in 100-year bonds at 1%. So they will not make 8% suddenly. Nothing changed, but just change the regulation, loosen the regulations so that everything looks good now. But even if you just look at the freaking balance sheet, you see this is not sustainable. So uh, fortunately, I just worked there for three years. So my pension will be 50 euro per month. Now it will be 25. Whew, okay, I will not get poor because of that. But I feel for all those that will at some point in time, because those getting their pension now will get their 11% increase at the cost of all those getting their pensions 20 years down the road. That's financial engineering. And that is how a crisis develops, which means that the crises are already here. The Fed is pumping money, printing money, like there is no future, they cannot lower that. At some point, people will lose faith in the debt, in the currency, and that's one crisis that will develop. It is just the question, when we will see that, nobody knows. Now, the question on how to invest in that environment. Charlie Munger makes things very simple, and now you have to see whether you are a person that likes simple answers, because all the solutions are usually simple. And the simple solution is just avoid. Avoid these kind of situations where you depend on the currency of a government, where you depend on your pension fund doing financial engineering, things like that. For your pension, forget about it. Build your own, start investing, buy another property, rent it out. You have to do the extra work to have two pensions at least if you want to be sure of getting something 20, 30 years down the road. That's a sad story, but by avoiding this, the future crisis, you can have a much better life, allow for compounding in uh, your lifetime, in your portfolio, work a little bit harder now when there is abundance to have a little bit more later when there will be less abundance because that is simply the cycle of life. Thanks for watching. Check what I do and I'll see you in the next video.